Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. A 35-year-old mother of three is crediting her faith as the reason she miraculously survived stage 4 brain cancer a decade ago after being told she had days to live. A month into her first pregnancy, Ashley Hallfield of Douglasville, Georgia, felt a knot in the back of her head that became hard and painful. I actually discovered the knot right before I got pregnant. She told Atlanta's 11 Alive. But I wrote it off to be a lymph node because it didn't really hurt. But as the pain worsened, so did her symptoms. By the time she was 32 weeks pregnant, she was concerned it was something serious and soon got the devastating news that the lump was indeed cancerous. Pathologists from all over the country studied the lump. Halford told the news outlet, They all agreed that it was rare and a very aggressive, possibly hormonally fueled cancer, but nobody could diagnose it. On November 17, 2007, at 33 weeks, she was induced so that she could begin treatment with her husband, David, by her side. We were preparing for our son to spend time in the neonatal intensive care unit, she says, but when he was born, he didn't have to. He got to go home two days later. The NICU doctor came in to see us, and he said that never in his career had he seen a 33-week term baby not go to the NICU, even for evaluation. That was just a miracle. She underwent surgery to remove the mass just four days after giving birth. The results, which came back five weeks later, showed that the cancer had spread to her brain, both lungs and a spot on her liver. She was diagnosed as stage four. It was then, in January 2008, the doctors told her the brain tumor was inoperable. They also performed a full body scan that showed other cancer spots throughout her body. At that point, they stopped trying to figure out what it was, saying, we need to start treating her or she's going to die, she recalls. Despite receiving the lifetime maximum dosage of radiation in just six weeks, the tumors continued to grow. She then turned to Faith. In February or March 2008, at my church, they started praying and fasting for the whole month, she told Eleven Alive. I continued chemo through July 2008 and then had more scans to check progress. I was praying because if there was no change or things were worse, I would be out of options. Doctors told her it was time to start recording every memory with her family because they didn't know how many more she'd be able to make. So that's what we did, Halford says. That's where we were at the end of July. They didn't even know what they were battling, so there would be no other options. When she went back in for scans, she was prepared to hear that her final days had arrived. Instead, she was told she had many more ahead. They said, the radiologist report shows no evidence of disease present, she recalls. I was so dumbfounded by what she said, I was like, what does that mean? She says, it means you're in remission. Her medical oncologist, Dr. Deborah Miller, told the news outlet that she admitted to Halford that, I never thought you'd make it. Theoretically, with stage 4 cancer, you're not curable, says Miller. I met Ashley when she was pregnant, when she had the neck mass. After her first round of treatment, more disease was found in her lungs and she was retreated. After that, she's been disease-free. It's nothing short of miraculous. Halford said that she fought to stay alive for her son. In July, she'll have been in remission for nine years. I credit my recovery to God, 100%, she said. Her miracles only continued from there. After a fertility doctor told her that she was in full-blown menopause and that there was no chance she'd have another biological child, she went on to have two more, a boy in 2013 and a girl in January. I just want to spread hope, she says. When I speak at churches, I speak about the fear, the fear and uncertainty, especially not knowing what I had. It's scary. She added, I want to give people the strength to go on, even when it comes to infertility. And if that's what I could do in life, I would die happy one day. In another similar story, an Arizona woman diagnosed with two brain tumors but is now cancer-free. A death penalty was issued to Heather Neese at the age of 24. She was facing not one but two brain tumors, one of which was glioblastoma grade 4, the same form of cancer that killed Senator Edward Kennedy in 2010. But now, six years later, she's cancer-free and that can't be explained by her doctors at the Barrow Neurological Institute in Arizona. She's clean with her new MRI and neurologically intact. Not only did the now 32-year-old niece outlive her life expectancy, she married and became a mother. 
as extreme radiation and chemotherapy can make cancer patients infertile, her good parenthood is remarkable. Nisa's seven-month-old daughter, Zoe, celebrated her first Christmas in December. The doctor of Nice claims that a patient can violate the biological rules in rare circumstances, but the original anatomy of the tumor was most frequently assumed in such cases. In her case, according to her surgeon, Dr. Robert Spetzler, director of the Barrow Neurological Institute at Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center in Phoenix, the pathology was not controversial. Spetzler said he'd never seen such a victory against phase 4 glioblastoma in his 35 years as a neurosurgeon in the United States. He said, it's one of the most malignant tumors there is. Invariably, it will come back and pop up somewhere else in the brain, and it's uniformly fatal. It's not unheard of that a few survive. It's a bell curve, and there are outliers, he said. But in her case, not only has she survived, but she's perfectly normal, and there's absolutely no evidence of a tumor on her MRI scan. Nice has a few thoughts of her own on why she's still alive today. One being God had a plan for me, Nice said. I also had a great team of doctors and wonderful family and friends with a positive attitude. The mind is so much more powerful than anyone can imagine. People believe that when they get cancer, it will kill them, but I never once thought that. Spetzler said that for glioblastoma, knees was on the young side, but it can occur at any age, even in infants. It all started in 2005, when knees had the first indication that something was wrong with him. She had just begun a new job at a doctor's office as a receptionist and was driving home from work. Suddenly, I didn't understand what the dashed white line meant in the road, said knees. I had been driving since I was 15, so I started panicking and I called my mom. She asked, did you take something? Have you taken anything? Knees was able to see but was unable to comprehend what she was doing. I was only 24 and I was having visual problems, she said. I can't even describe them. Her supervisor, a dermatologist, demanded she see a doctor and an MRI uncovered a low-grade tumor pushing into her brain's visual reception cord. Knees, always the optimist, said, I just moved from Missouri to Phoenix. I was just out of college and felt like I had a whole world waiting for me there. Looking back, it probably grounded me a bit. At another institution, she underwent surgery and participated in a Duke University drug trial for oral chemotherapy, repeating MRIs every three months. She claimed she was advised by the doctors to go live your life. But one of the scans revealed that the white flare of tumor development within less than a year. The new tumor, a stage 4 glioblastoma, turned out to be aggressive and was sitting on the right side, affecting three areas of her brain, the temporal, parietal, and occipital lobes. According to Spetzler, who took over her care in 2007, the lower-grade tumor had turned into a more aggressive tumor that's not uncommon for glioblastoma. I decided not to remove the entire tumor or paralyze my left side, so I asked Dr. Spetzler to debulk it. I didn't want quantity. I wanted consistency. I opted not to have the entire tumor removed on my left side or I would have been paralyzed. So I asked Dr. Spetzler to debulk it. I didn't want quantity. I wanted quality. One of the doctors said six months when her mother was bold enough to inquire how long she'd have to live. For whatever reason, because of being an athlete or just being mad, I wanted to defy him and the medical world and show that no one was a statistics, Nice said. I was immediately defiant. I never once thought it would be the death of me. Significant headaches and vomiting from the pain were caused by the tumor, and she underwent surgery on Friday, April 13th, 2007. Friday the 13th will never scare me again, she said. Heavy doses of chemotherapy and radiation were accompanied by surgery. Knees will be tracked for the rest of her life with MRIs, but her brain does not display any symptoms of residual cancer for now. As Spetzler said, I would not feel comfortable calling it a cure, but there's no evidence of a tumor, as you would expect with someone who's lived much longer than expected. There's a hole where the tumor was. Her survival is remarkable. Her boyfriend had freaked out, according to Nies, at the time of her cancer diagnosis. It makes you very insecure when someone tells you up front they can't handle it. Bye-bye. In 2011, however, she met Joe Nies, now 54, an engineer who was her senior by 22 years. She said, it didn't even phase him, and it blew me away. He made a good point. We can all die in a car crash tomorrow. In October, they married while Nies was still receiving one week of chemotherapy per month. She'd always wanted kids and had warned her eggs may have been destroyed by aggressive treatments. 
It was almost as scary for me as hearing about the cancer, she said. On the recommendation of her oncologist, because of the unknowns associated with cancer and pregnancy, Knees chose to undergo in vitro fertilization with a surrogate. I prayed hard, she said. After egg retrieval, there were only two follicles and the rest were empty. Just one was viable in the three days they took to mature. We had that one and she's my daughter, Knees said. My husband had never been married before or had kids and his parents thought they would never see the day, so it was a miracle to his mother that he now has a child. My husband had never been married before or had children and his parents thought that they'd never see the day, so it was a miracle for his mother to have a child now. I wake up and thank God every morning that I can feel my ten fingers and toes and have a caring daughter and husband, Nee said. There have been so many miracles, one after another, as my dad said. So many angels must be sitting on my shoulders. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.